In this video, we're gonna talk about Lovelace, a project that looks to bring more utility to NFTs by creating an ecosystem for both creators and collectors alike. To start off, I actually kind of like this project just because I think it brings something new to the space. It looks to be attacking uh, NFTs from a slightly different avenue and providing a bit more of an infrastructure in place for NFTs, which I think they really do need. One of the number one questions I get from most people who are asking me about crypto and NFTs in general is, what the hell are NFTs? What's their point? Why is it just a picture? Why are they worth so much? And I try to explain the utility to them, but I feel like if we had more projects and ecosystems that were related to giving utility to NFTs and actually putting underlying assets available, making it easier for people to understand, create, and actually collect them, then it might uh, potentially bring a more understanding to the general public out there and make it a little bit more of an easy investment for, again, the average investor. When you are attacking a space that really hasn't been dived into before, there are going to be some pitfalls and there are going to be a lot of unknowns, which I think that this uh, project will have to overcome. That said, if you do know of any other projects that are looking to tackle this sort of space, NFT space, uh, leave them down below. I do love to interact with the community and I do have quite a big community out there that reaches out and lets me know information. This was actually courtesy of a viewer who put this one out there. I hadn't heard of Lovelace before and it's actually a very small project. So we're looking at those real crypto moonshots here today. This is a serious micro cap that has a under $2 million valuation. As of making this video, it was higher previously but that's a very small micro cap in the scheme of things. But this is where those moonshots come from and they have a lot to gain, but they also have a lot to lose. So let's dive into Lovelace. Stuart from the future here. I'm just gonna throw this in real quick because these videos do tend to get long. I do a pretty deep dive into this project or at least vet through a lot of the uh, information out there. So if you do wanna skip ahead, I have left links, uh, timestamps below for you to jump ahead. Again, my final thoughts are really at the end. If you just want a summary and a wrap up of it, that's a great place to go check it out. But I do advise if you wanna look deeper into the project or at least how I look at projects from a face value place, um, it would be an interesting thing to watch through some of this and at least skip to some of them just to kind of see what generally I'm looking at. So that said, go back to the project. We're gonna just move over to the charts and we're gonna dive right into it and start with where we are price action wise for today. We're sitting around seven cents and you know, this is, this is something of a bit of a dismal return up to this point. We are seeing a little bit of a trajectory downwards, but I've already covered this in other videos. I think any project that came out around this time period here in the end of 2021, um, during the middle of a bull run or just to the beginning of the bull run during all the hype, there was already a lot of incentive inside of other projects. Money was already either invested or people had already started looking for those altcoins that they were looking for those moonshots. Unfortunately, projects that launched during that period didn't, weren't able to get the same sort of run up and a little bit of hold time and, and potentially bring people into their ecosystem before we went up into those major caps of the la end of last year. So I think that that is again, one of those reasons why I'm just kind of going to give this a little bit of a pass on this to be said because again I do see that they've actually made some utility that said a lot of the actual functions they've been making here uh, have been happening in the last month or two even though we've con continued to see a downward trajectory that I think also is related to the Bitcoin and the entire altcoin market going down so I am taking these charts with a grain of salt with altcoins especially in the micro cap space and again, noting that it was started in that sort of during the bull run, it's not a great time to be started. And, and as you can see, it actually was, it, it came out at somewhere around $1.70 was the, the peak there. And we're all the way down at seven cents. That's a huge drop. Um, so unfortunately for anyone who got in there, I, I, I fear, I hold for you, I, you know, I feel bad for you, but I think that now that we're down here in some realistic levels where this could taper off, potentially living through the bear market, which could happen, or maybe if we see some sort of resurgence from altcoins because of Gamify and the metaverse, this could be one of those interesting projects if we find that we decide, hey, this is a useful token coming out the other side. Um, you know, seven cents is also attainable, and it's also in those price ranges where people are looking at altcoins and they are, they're just jumping in because they're so cheap. Like people don't really understand market cap. So if it's a seven cent versus a two, $5, you know, altcoin, but they have the same market cap, people don't really care. They, they, they like the seven cent one because they're like, oh, it's gonna moon, it's gonna moon. And my, my favorite quote here out of this is, uh, oh, where is it? Lace win $10. It's at seven cents, lace win $10. I feel like that's how I might title my thumbnail on this one because it's just so hilarious to me. So if we take a look over at the mar max mar supply, uh, we got 250 million, which is a modest uh, token supply. I, I like to see that occasionally. We have all these billion you know, market supplies out there. So I like to see some of these lower ones. I'm not really sure which one would provide better. 
Um, I know that the Lovelace token, it's actually going to be, have some utility within its ecosystem, but also within the games that may be developed out of this project. So uh, we're looking at a market cap of about 1.3 million right now. And uh, that's, that's really not that high. It's very low. And if it was fully diluted, it would be 17 million. So that shows us the circulating supply is significantly under there. Over here we can see, but it isn't recorded. So, uh, you know, it hasn't been audited. So that's what we're giving, given from whatever has been reported and micro, uh, coin market cap actually has out there. So this uh, is actually a BNB. It's a Binance. It's, that's where it's, the coin is actually living right now. And the first place that was listed out was PancakeSwap with a pair uh, against BNB. So a little hard to kind of get involved with if you wanted to get originally. And I, I understand that it was uh, launched on two pads, launch pads, uh, ADA pad, and I'd have to have a look on the Twitter. There was two, two launch pads that were allowed to go through this, or you could jump over to PancakeSwap when it finally got the liquidity there. But it has since raised uh, some liquidity pools on KuCoin, both in Ethereum and USDT. So it is accessible again. Uh, obviously, I would be looking at the USDT one just because that's an easy entry point for most people. So it's good to know that it is there. One thing I'll say about it is it does talk about the project uh, really wanting to focus on ADA, uh, Cardano, and um, it, it, it's gonna launch because I believe they understand there's some problems with ADA right now, or at least it's still in its process to develop more of a working ecosystem itself. So they decided to launch out on other EVMs, Ethereum virtual machines, and I imagine they were gonna do Ethereum, but they probably jumped over to Binance because I heard that making uh, tokens on Binance is like incredibly easy compared to all the others. I heard it's like almost scam territory easy because it's so easy. But that said, just to get up and running, that is where the coin actually lives on. Um, let's take a look over at, uh, let's actually take a look at the, why don't we actually take a look at it? One thing I did wanna note about it, and something that might be interesting to actually correlate uh, or uh, actually cross-reference would be the total token supply that's actually held out there. If we cut tab over to the holders here, we can see the wallets that are currently hold it. I like to see this. These, this little tab here under, uh, says that these are smart contracts. So you can start to see um, that these numbers here, once we look at the tokenomics of it, that these are probably gonna be numbers that match to it. Like this one is locked rewards and it's clearly stated. And you can see that it's actually locked in and that's 20%. There's another 20% here. And I know that it said, I think, I believe part of this is, uh, part of it's for the team. There's gonna be a private sale, but they're all smart contracts that have a distribution schedule that it looks like a lot of this would be involved with, right? So here's the pancake swap down here, which is also, but this is fantastic. I actually haven't come across a lot of uh, tokens that have all this wrapped in smart contracts. What the smart contracts actually are would be beyond the scope of this, but it actually is something interesting to see. So that does, you know, bode well for them. I do like to see that. And honestly, I feel like that's a better way to at least, you know, lead people that it's going to be a good project to get involved with. They're not trying to hold it all in a 60% token, like one wallet where they're doing whatever they want with it. Um, so yeah, let's, let's jump on over to the website. Uh, and they've done very well. It looks good. It looks, looks the look, walks the talk, so to speak. Um, you know, it looks very fantastic. And these are the main features and benefits. So if you're new to the, to the, to the project, I believe a lot of people who might be looking at this have already un kind of looked at this and understood it, but these are the main two people that they're going after. Obviously, there's really only two in the NFT space, but um, they're going after the creators and the fans, the collectors. And as you can see, when I toggle between the two, that they're trying to hit both sides of it. So creating NFTs is really an interesting place because they've acknowledged inside of their white paper that they don't, they, they see that there's something lacking there because it's already kind of difficult. It's unapproachable as an NFT to create it, to actually make utility to it. So they do speak to making utility for NFTs as an important aspect of making NFTs more uh, approachable. And I 100% agree with that. So this is kind of why like from the outset, I like this project because I feel like this project definitely is trying to focus on a problem that exists. And that is what it is. It's like NFTs need to make it easier, creating your own blockchain mini part games. Now, part of what I think they're trying to do here might be a little bit of a difficult task. Um, I think trying to involve other people who aren't quite capable of making, developing these games and making it easier for them, I think is a place that it's going to go, but it might be something that they're going to run into some, you know, harder difficulties with. So you can see that they want to do a launch pad where you can actually start to 
service and, and get it, get people involved with your NFTs. And from the and let's just quickly tab over to the fan side of it. And it's really just the inverse of it, just making it more accessible, making more games available to play, creating an ecosystem where you can come and find new games, where you can find specific curated uh, NFT projects or, or NFTs to collect, like buy, instead of say OpenSea, where it's just a bunch of stuff thrown out there. So this is an interesting thing. And you can see down here again, we mentioned Cardano as the main place where this is gonna live, but they're building on Ethereum and I'll take a look around and we'll see if we can find it. But they do mention that they're gonna start on Ethereum just because Cardano is not there yet. Cruising on down. So I've actually done a little bit of research into this already and we seem to be around here. Um, these, these are the two places where I think we are. I think we're actually at three on the, eco, on the roadmap and we're at number four. So they've made the lace token. They've actually made the connector. They say they've actually made the connector. They don't display it. They actually say just a small snippet inside of the white paper that it's completed, more details coming soon. So we don't actually know if it works. I would, again, if they haven't launched on Cardano already and seeing as Cardano's having problems, that's probably like something they're faking till they make it. Um, but you can see where they're looking to go, make the marketplace toolkit, you know, your standard roadmap, they have a plan to go forward, which is something we like to see. And you'll notice that this ad animals or, or Ada, Ada animals, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, um, ad animals is going to be, I think their main launching point for, you know, their marketing, it's going to be here. Here's a project we made with our product, right? But I'd be curious to see what that product actually ends up being. And then, you know, therefore it works come use us, right? So I think that's gonna be their sort of marketing strategy mainly to push this thing. Um, the token, what you can do with it, you can get discounts, you can have access to the launch pads, you can have staking rewards, and they actually have a live staking already, that was part of the roadmap. Uh, governance on some options that will come down the road. Although this will be more of a centralized project, I believe, just because in the white paper they do mention part of the server back function being centralized, decentralization over here for some aspects of it in part of it. So. I don't know. They, and they do mention that you will be using Lace coin as far as in-game transactions or purchasing other assets in-game. You will get a steep discount if you use Lace instead of say Ethereum or anything else. So right here, currently, if you wanna go use it, you've gotta manually put in the contract against BNB or Binance coin. Um, so this is here available for you too. Go get it at PancakeSwap. Like I said, this was probably done before it came out on KuCoin. I haven't checked it on KuCoin, but I would assume CoinMarketCap actually has it there. So. Um, here we go, right on their website, right at the bottom. We do have, I like transparency as far as like, at least bringing it to the head, token distribution, what that is gonna end up looking like. So this is where I guess we should sort of compare to this. So we see a 20% and another 21. So that we see a couple of 20% and then we see like eight and five. So what kind of percentages do we have here? So we have a 22. So that's gonna be rewards, the reserve fund. Um, we see a five, so advisors and seed. Right, so this is, it's somewhere in here, right? So this is probably advisors, this is seed, or maybe this was, right? Cause it's diminished and they've already paid out some. So the numbers kind of relate. I mean, again, I could probably dive into the contracts if I knew more about them. Unfortunately, again, that's not part of the scope. So I'm just looking at this as trying to look at this as what we can all utilize to make a decision on this project. I'm like, I can't get that much deeper into it. But I feel like that's a pretty good, you know, all right, at least it's matching up. So those are the signs I look for. Because again, at this point, someone brought up a very good point in my, in my uh, uh, what's it called today? I, in a, I replied to a comment where someone was thinking like, sometimes I feel like I'm gambling with these choices. And honestly, we are. We're so early on into a crypto assets class that it, there's just not the data points available for us to actually analyze the history of this to make a better decision. So we really have to go off of the, the fundamentals of what they're trying to say, how transparent they're being, what they're doing with their community outreach and how they're actually interacting um, again with the, in, in Twitter and social profiles, but the team behind it, you know, those aren't always the best metrics, but those are really all we have because if you consider a VC venture capitalist investing in any other thing in the real world, it's the same sort of concept they have to go through. Although I will say um, quite often they will look for some sort of working prototype or a working product, which at this point, again, we do have one in this, but I think at the time when you were getting in even earlier, that would have been a little scarier and more of a gamble, but the rewards potentially are more there. That said, I do think that this project has enough to where we see, if we see a little bit of product release, there's still gonna be plenty of games to be made because if they do start to release some actual uh, products and against uh, prototypes of things that we can, we can attach to some reality, then there's still gonna be plenty of games. We're at seven cents right now. It started out at two, uh, about $2. That said, we haven't really seen it react through a bull run. So coming up, let's see what happens.
That said, let's come back over here. So I would go to the, this is normally where I might jump into the light paper, um, although I like to reserve it a little bit for the end. They put a special disclaimer in there that they don't want it shown anywhere. So I'm not going to really play with fire on that. Um, I don't really want to get involved in case I ever do interact with the team. I would like to interview them just to see where it is because I feel like that's the next logical step after I've made the decision on this uh, particular project. But they do kind of go over the main a little bit deeper in what it is they're trying to offer. Although what I will say is I think they're leaving it up a little vague. They're leaving a little bit of ambiguity there just because I feel like they need to, they, they realize they're gonna have some feeling out of what the ecosystem is going to end up looking like 100%. But they do keep referring back to sort of this part up here where they're talking about you know, especially this side, like the back end of integration and how they're gonna make an ecosystem, how they're going to actually curate the NFT selection and won't just let it be haphazard, um, which is kind of contradictory because one of the problems they actually addressed was the fact that some of these nicer projects are too curated to allow smaller independents to get seen. So there's a few things I think they have to tweak on, especially they mentioned in there, but it does cover a lot of, uh, you know, goes in there that they express a few more information points that would be very useful. I'll link it down below for you guys to go check it out. Obviously you can come over here and check it out, but safe to say, you know, it, it, it's about as informational as this. It has a little bit more into the roadmap. They actually dive into uh, the roadmap and how the, the actual mechanics of it will work. Um, I still have yet, I wanna actually see that because I feel like anyone these days can put those together. I wanna actually start to see some product come out of the project. So again, I'm gonna stick to, you know, their kind of disclaimer on not showing it just because they put one in there. I haven't seen one before, so that's kind of interesting. I think they, the next thing after that was in the disclaimer was that they don't want any liability, right? So they're probably just trying to protect themselves from bad, bad investment problems. Here we go, starting off with the team and the two advisors that we have here. What I will say about this is, I already brought up the LinkedIn's. I have a few tabs at the top here that you may already have been looking at. Uh, the team got a little bit of, definitely have their fingers in pies when it comes to blockchain. The advisors are really where this is at so far. So uh, looking at the founder, let's jump on over to, this is the founder here. So we actually check him out. Again, I use LinkedIn. That's pretty much seems to be the standard practice for people to show up. Otherwise you start searching names and it comes across as harder. Um, but we actually have a little bit of history, you know, can, you know, actually started some little businesses here, been a founder of his own crypto content creators. I clicked on this. It's not a, uh, it wasn't, you know, let's check out the website real quick. This wasn't a huge, you know what I mean? It just kind of looks amateurish a little bit. So it was a little bit of a start somewhere. We all start somewhere. Obviously this was several years ago. So this was him sort of dabbling in probably making some of his early businesses. And uh, you know, there was more moments. He was a trader for a while. So I'm not really sure what that meant. It was actually on a contract. So it's very interesting. So I don't really know what that particularly meant, but it seems like it was in emerging markets, cryptocurrency. So he was part of some sort of in the eco, you know, that's what I like to see. At least you're in the world of it. You're not coming from say, you know, construction and, and now you're making a crypto project. That's what I really try to avoid. I wanna at least see that you've been in inside of it. This one here, this is supposed to be a holding company focused on crypto and blockchain. So this is what we like to see. What I will note is that when we actually click on the website or you know click on the project itself and go to look at it, there are only one employee listed. So none of the other guys are listed under it, which is you know kind of interesting. You, you, generally they'll get on board, but what I'll say is that this uh, young fellow here, I'm not even gonna butcher these names, but Sapphire, I mean, obviously I can do that part. Um, he doesn't have a presence, but I did come across, so when you type in, there wasn't any actual, uh, he didn't have a name that came through, so I didn't actually see any, any specific one for him, but I can see him on these panels and videos. So this is actually a YouTube video, which I watched a little bit of, where they interviewed this guy here and uh, he's actually on another panel, which looks like it took place, so, um, or is going to take place. Sorry, that's actually taking place right to yesterday. So he was on a panel, so he's also somewhat involved, but really no more information to go off of in deep inside uh, of his history, um, which again is a little bit disappointing. And these two were not at all to be found on LinkedIn, so if there is any information on them, it might be worth a digger, deeper dive into it, but this is, sort of the, the general gist of what I find is like teams, there will be a few team members that you just can't find on. They've just been in the background. Doesn't mean they're not good at what they're doing, but at the same time, it would be nice to see that. I, there's no clickable too, that's the thing. I just like it when they have it so easy for you. Like where's your 
history? Where's your information? At this point, we're pretty used to doing that, but whatever. But it really was the advisors that I thought were, you know, saving grace on this sort of thing. And I do see that this gentleman here actually has a project which looked interesting. There's obviously some previous work with crypto or at least in part of some sort of assets using the dollar sign there. So that he was involved obviously in India in some marketing and some different building out C open DeFi platform. So he's well into it. And this would be the project he's working with now is NFT3. I'm not really sure. I looked at it for a second. It looks like some way to make some digital ownership uh, on the website right here. DID wrapped NFT allows staked identity. I didn't dive into it too deep. Again, the legitimacy looking of the website bodes well. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it for now. If I really were to get heavily invested, I'd probably dive into these people, looking at the project a little bit more, what is it really? But the fact that there seems to be a project and some history inside of uh, DeFi space, I do like to see that. Um, where am I? Where's my team? There we go. So that's that and that one. And then our man here, I actually brought him up here and so he's been doing uh, DeFi for a while or he's been doing part of it so this company here that he runs with another team member he works with so he's been at ISBX for 12 years and then which is great to see and they make apps in sort of help businesses make and, and they, they, they throw big brands out there but they've actually helped them design little small like inter, interfacing apps that might be for like interfacing with a JBL speaker or stuff like that and then the he's a principal owner of this one which going through it is kind of interesting. I was curious myself. Um, did it actually take you to the website? Yeah. Uh, helping you make white papers and basically designing probably a structure for your plan so you can get it up and going. Um, that's kind of cool. I like that you could sell that out as a service. Investor presentations, token economics, token sale white papers. So just really giving you some of the basic fundamentals to get your project so you can make those private sales. That's cool. So that's again our man here art um so those two advisors looking not too bad in my opinion i feel like they bring something to the team that at least goes cool they put some money into maybe they maybe they need a little bit of work into it obviously there is some play they've had but that's great to see that sort of information um at animals nft game so this is kind of where they say february 22 they've got this listed right here as the release date so we do have some, they have, it seems as though they have actually adhered to this. So I like to see milestones being met. Although what I will say, it's unfortunate that right here, they're not taking me right to it. So what I will notice is that this was particularly difficult to find any more diving into this, um, into the ad animals. And I'll, I'll dive into that in a second. I just wanna wrap up on this last part here on the website that I wanna talk about. So the two things that they're pushing really heavy right now seem to be the Love Loot staking. So they're maintaining relationship with their community via their Discord, their Twitter, and they seem to be pretty active in there and they're running sort of prize pools for staking. So incentive for staking, incentive for locking up your tokens with them in liquidity pools or just plain staking, um, they're actually offering you win prize pools okay so once we click on this let's bring this in for you guys so we've actually started in here but like you can actually win some decent prizes so like look they're actually going to give away like a networked standard parcel a network a two i don't know why it's got a two there but land parcels you know what i mean i saw there was one here like a sandbox it's probably land parcels so it's kind of cool and with each one of them they're going to give away i'm not sure what the wl spot stands for but it's probably something some form of nft that you actually get um, and it may be like just like a plot of land. Maybe it is. I feel like I saw that somewhere in the discord But they're giving away this pie pool so you can stake and they have three different types of staking here um, I believe the difference between these two was like one you can pull in you have to drop in for a certain amount of time Right, so you have to put in for a few months or a few weeks One of them you actually get you can pull in and out But it has like a little bit more volatility and has a higher APR to my understanding uh, and then liquidity pool staking is where they're offering you. So you go and stake it with the liquidity pool on say pancake swap, bring those LP to tokens over here, and then they're gonna give you a APR on that. Right now, I would be curious to see at the APRs um, what they are. And that might be something I look into and do like a short on or something really quick, but the rate of diminishing, right? So what we're diminishing right now, like at this rate, is the staking enough to make up for it? That was something I was kind of curious about because it, if it's in those one of those some of those high crazy APRs like four or five thousand percent, is that making up for this drop? 
I don't know. I'd be curious to do the math on that and I might do that. Let me know below if that's something you would like to know about. Uh, if not, I may do it anyway. I may do it anyway because I'm interested. So this is really a major place where they really are interacting with their community. And we can actually take a look at that. Let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of these. Um, let's before we go over to there. So uh, let's take a look. Do they have it at the bottom here? Yes. So let's go to Twitter. And so that's where they're interacting a lot with their community. So um, they're promoting staking. They want to maintain the liquidity inside of it. They probably want that money so that they can use it to sell off or at least keep the value somewhat hyping. So look, staking rewards at 4,000% right now. Okay, so you've got a lot of NFT giveaways to put your API rewards there. Um, they're really trying to incentivize people. What I will say is that seems to be the mass amount of information they're putting out there is a little bit of information on the, on the project. And then generally, you know, what is a launch pad for NFTs? Generally, they've been promoting it. Look, here's another. So they've got these certain goals too. So if there's a certain amount locked up overall uh, throughout the process, they will actually be giving away major, bigger projects. So instructions, if we actually look over here. Yeah, okay, so um, let's zoom in for you guys. So this is on their blog. If we actually look, 4,000 APR, uh, here you go. So the guaranteed API, APY rewards are going to be capped at 2 million lays guaranteed for 218 APY. I'm not really sure what the difference between that or is that per block reward starting at APR greater than 2000. Not sure what the difference between those, but the LP, LP staking, so basically giving liquidity to the market, it's gonna give you 4,000 returns. So I'd be curious, but that means you're probably gonna be involved in both Lovelace and BNB tokens. So, you know, even though BNB is probably outperformed significantly, it's still something to be looking at. So come take a look at this if you're interested in the Love Loot. I do like seeing a lot of projects that they're connecting with, you know, Network, Sandbox, those are some big ones that I like to see. They've just mentioned this launch of Oasis. Let me know if you know what Oasis is. Citus is actually one of those projects that I've heard a little bit about too from the community. So I wanna go check that one out soon here, uh, really soon. Um, so yeah, it, this is this is the main thing I wanted to show you on this. They really are pushing it, and I keep going to that. So that's the NFT for the ad animals, which is where we're going next. But that's really a lot of what you get when you check out their. Um, these are these are their keys that you actually get on NFTTrade.com. So you can get keys extra. That's part of just being. So if you're just part of staking, you get that as a reward for just staking anyway. And it's going to be incentive again. So they're pushing this a lot. The one thing I'll say is that when we put in dollar sign lace uh, and we go take a look at lace, you know, there isn't an insane amount of, inf you know, hype out there right now. So there's a few people kind of mentioning it. Occasionally I see some information, but most of the pride right now is the community kind of just kind of curious about the project, seeing occasional posts about it doing well. Um, no real hate, no real sort of frustration with the project. We're seeing some pump news come out about it, getting some decent little pumps. And we've seen that in the, we saw that in the charts, there was like little dips in and out. So just gotta be a little careful when actually getting involved with it. But what I'll say is that there doesn't seem to be a huge outcry or, or upsetness about the project itself. So they're still moving forward. And really the next place that I would take us over to is Add animals, which is where they're pushing a lot of it. So I think they're going to be using this tool to market the company and really push it forward and saying, hey, look, this is what we did. We developed this on our project. This is what's going to actually push us forward. And so the first thing you're going to be looking at that. So we got about 37,000 followers, which means there's a lot of people checking it out and we get constant updates. So they have been very involved. They're out there very regularly, March 8th. March 8th, you know, they got AMAs regularly, which I would love to check out an actual AMA, because like I said, that's one of the places I'd be looking next is actually communicating. Um, but they're working with this project here, Oasis, which I'd be curious to check out. It's got that Farmville look. Um, you know, they're, they're, they were pushing it all quite a bit of just content out here. And I was like, okay, cool. And it seems like they started to open up some games and stuff. And I was like, where do I go? So the next place I dived into was, and I gotta stay right here, but their Discord. Um, and they have a bunch of information. There is definitely some interaction here in the community between this and the Telegram, to be honest, is where I found quite a bit of interaction. Their community managers are responding to people. I think there's a few questions that I would say that don't get answered to the best I would like to see. And sometimes they're kind of just forwarded to like medium blog posts um, that are, you know, they're definitely keeping it vague still too, because I think they're working through it. It's still a very early project. So gambling, certainly. 
Um, but the main thing to come out of this Discord, I personally think, is the this here. So you had to deep, deep dive a little bit into this. So I'm at February 14th as a post, because I started seeing these sort of like prize pools, or not prize pools, but these mini games that they were talking about launching on it. And I was like, where can you actually play this? And so I actually went over and they have a website. You just can't easily find it, which is crazy. Because if I go over to their Twitter, right, let's go all the way up. And it's not, you know what I mean? Like, how do you not easily have this accessible? Now, I know it could still be kind of in like beta, zeta, alpha, zeta, whatever version you want way before it gets launched. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, they should let us know. I was looking for a while. I've looked at this project a couple of times, back and forth, just to kind of spend some time. And I was like, oh, here's actually this thing doing well. Because at first I was going to say, this isn't doing good. You know, they don't have anything actually out there. Let's sit and wait for an actual game to come out. But We've got a website that actually covers over what's going to happen. They're actually going to launch an animal token that's going to be involved in this ecosystem. They're also going to have a care token, which again, I said that Lace will be able to purchase these at steep discounts. Um, and then they've started putting out these mini games, which is kind of interesting, right? So that one's coming soon, but they have one here. This one actually is running, so coming soon, but they're actually, so they need to update this. Um, and then they have some partners here, which is interesting. I thought this was cool. I still like that this is partnered with Network because that's a virtual reality one. And so when I see that and I see these little games, I'm curious. They do keep talking about the NFT bridging different chains. So there's gonna be some sort of link between chains um, and which I think is very interesting to, to, you know, that's what NFTs are missing. That's what a lot of these projects are missing is that they're building their ecosystems and they're not gonna be able to share NFTs even though they think they want to. So they need to be thinking about this now is NFT sharing across platforms. This, you know, kind of works. If we look down at the roadmap, I like that they actually have one here for it. They've crossed all these things off that they've actually gone through and, and, and actually tackled. It would appear to be true. And it looks like this is the next sort of place where they want to start launching the animal token as an initial DEX offering and have um, releasing mini games. Let's hold that up so you guys can see it. Um, releasing more mini games, mint the NFTs, all that sort of jazz. This is like the next step. So we're looking at Q1 of 2022. So within this month, so we're either gonna see this very soon or you know, obviously it's gonna be pushed to Q2, but I still feel like they're kind of sticking to it. What I will say about this roadmap versus the roadmap that's in the white paper is that the roadmap that's in the white paper, I feel like they might've fallen off a little bit. They had much earlier that the launch of this game was coming out and that it was gonna be on Cardano last year. So that none of that has come true. Um, so they're, as far as their initial white paper launching, I feel like they just made that as like a stone, like threw it on the board, see what sticks. And that's fine. I think projects will do that from time to time. As long as you maintain relationship with the community, let people know because they just like, like a VC, it's your community is now your venture capitals. They're, they're, they're the people who are investing. You need to keep them informed. And I hate it when you see projects that don't keep people informed. So, but the th thing with this is that we can actually go and check it out. Once you go to play the game, you can play, you can click and they have a couple of games available, these two. And I actually, cause it takes a minute to load up. I brought it up. So should we play real quick? Solo play. And here's the thing, you don't even need a token. You don't even need a coin connected. I'm playing as a guest. Oh. Okay, it's probably gonna capture on my microphone. Eh, I wanna get that one. So it's like a working mini game. I mean, not much more can be said to that. So I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't know how to, Pause the audio. Um, slight problem. I can't exit the game though. Okay, so I guess just crash out. So I did. I did do this already, and then once I lost, I crashed out. Okay. So um, yeah, but you can see there's people playing. There's a dashboard. There's people playing. They're earning tokens. I imagine if you connected your wallet, it would actually mean something. I again imagine this is a play to earn, which they have mentioned many times. But I hope that it's already play to earn even for these mini tokens. So. Um, yeah, that was very promising to me. So I did like to see this as a part of the project. So um, I think, again, the community is here. There's a bunch of people kind of talking. They're, they're involved. They're actually reaching out quite a bit. And the fact that they have a project or they actually have the game, which they're gonna use as their sort of like project lead to show people how this works, that they made a game. Um, I'm thinking they're just making a game and then they're gonna try and develop the back end of this Lovelace later. And they're gonna say that it was the thing that caused it to exist. 
it's kind of like, you know, it's like chicken before the egg sort of thing. But whatever works, you know, if that gives them the funds they need to keep the project alive, I feel like you do what you need to as an entrepreneur to develop things. Um, the things, again, I'll, I'll kind of recap here. What is about Lovelace is NFT project that's looking to build, or it's a project that's looking to build an NFT ecosystem that will allow a lot of interaction for NFTs across chain, which is very interesting, but also really helping creators and uh, uh, collectors interact or, or have a better use case scenario and more utility for their NFTs, allowing specifically when you talk about the creators, it really is supposed to be allowing them to make them easier and come up with utility or attach utility much easier. So I'm curious to see how this will actually lead over from making a video game, like making a little play to earn game, even though it will be proof in the pudding that they can make a game and they actually can follow through, which is a good thing to see. Um, I just don't know how that completely relates to it, although I think they're gonna use that as the test bed for how they're gonna make it work. And they do mention, uh, do show in one of their videos there that they're gonna put, you know, you're gonna be able to link your Ethereum NFT version of the animal over to your Cardano version of the animal and it will live on that network now. So I think it's gonna be rudimentary to begin with, but it will hopefully evolve into something. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there is something to be said for treading in new territory. Now this is where crypto moonshots can really take off, but you do need to be cautious because there are a lot of pitfalls that they could fall into and someone could come along behind them keeping, bay, keeping a little bit of distance, watching what they're doing, following, and then just overtake with some new information that may be watching them fall into some pitfalls. So that is one of those things that I would keep an eye out as far as investing in this project and keeping, uh, you know, wh whether or not you wanna throw some money into it. Do look at its price action where it is now. Personally, I would like to see some, again, confirmation that we're on our way into a different direction. I would like to see a confirmation from here from Bitcoin and the rest of the altcoin market before I was to get heavily involved in this one, I still feel like they have quite a lot to go. And I think that there's plenty of gains to be made there. So if we take a look at the charts really quickly, you know, where we're sitting way down here, we're on a nice place to enter. It's only pretty much up from here, theoretically. I know obviously there's still at seven cents, there's still plenty of down room, but it's, it's one of those good places that it can go up. So the, the reaction from the altcoin market going up or seeing some interaction, either some major marketing pull would be fantastic. And even if they do make a game, I still feel like there's room for it to grow. Axie didn't blow up until it was well established. Like Axie Infinity, which is kind of where I remind this, it didn't blow up massively until it was it had the player base that was causing people to be wowed. Like once it had like a million, several million players having, and there were really people living in the ecosystem and the scholarship program and people were earning real money, wasn't until it blew up. I mean, it was several years after the game kind of had started and had its legs moving. So I think this project has a little bit of time on it, honestly. Um, when I start to look at it, could we, could we do a comparison? Could we say that this being the fundamentals of um, an actual Axie being you know, could this be a much bigger project? Honestly, I believe so. If this does build ecosystems, which I always say an ecosystem is far more utility than, or an ecosystem or an underlying project, like a lower layer, has far more length and utility than say just a game. So the game, the animal token that'll come out of it, that add animals, any of the NFT projects that come out of this probably won't have the same sort of use or the same sort of market cap that we'd be looking for to see gains on. But something like this sitting at 1 million right now, that's super low. I mean, this is a really low number to be at for something that's building like a potentially game-changing infrastructure for what is already kind of like at a popular place in the NFT space. So this market cap, I mean, it's even, it's almost impossible to make a price prediction from this point, but I mean, could this go to several dollars? Of course, there's no way this couldn't go to several dollars if it was again, fulfilling what it claims to want to do. Could this go to several dollars? Certainly, but let's let's do a quick mathematics on what that would mean. Let's bring over the calendar, uh, the calendar, let's bring over the calculator. Um, let's do 250 million and let's times that by, yeah, I mean, if this was gonna be a billion, so let's times that by, four billion could it be a billion dollar market cap if it actually had an ecosystem of nfts being made you know like an open sea but also provided tool building assets for creators that also created um 
marketplaces launch pads for NFTs to be easier to have real world utility. If it followed through on that billion dollar market cap really isn't much these days. I mean, what's a few billion amongst friends, right? So that would be technically a fully diluted market supply and that would be at four or five dollars. So that was four dollars. Yeah, so 250 is four dollars. So that would be a four dollar price from here, which is, I mean, let's do four dollars divided by zero seven cents just for round numbers. That's a 57 times from where it is. That's a pretty big one. So th this is one of those moonshots that if you were to get in now, you would be looking at those real moonshots with those million gains that you're looking for. This could be it, you know, you're putting in that, you know, I mean, just putting in a thousand dollars would be $57,000 you could make potentially. So a thousand dollars would be very little for you to, if that's something you could put aside and just say, if I lost it, I lost it. Not that that's an easy thing to say. Um, and then make $57,000 and say the next bull run, I don't know. Would it be a billion market cap in the next bull run? Probably not, unless the mania is real. I would probably see this more in a two year play. So, you know, it would be one of those things, or not a two year, a two, two cycle sort of play where it might be after it's developed over the next three, four years. But who knows, three, four years to make it to the next Bitcoin cycle could really be something um, easily attained for this project. Who knows how there seem to be on track and they seem to be making good progress. So I would say 57X you know, is, is potential, but even if we divided that by two and we set a 28 X or a 30 X from there and you put in $5,000, let's put in $5,000 just for fun numbers. Um, you know, that's $142,000 that could be made if you put that in and it was to get to two and a half dollars. So kind of back to where it originally came out. Again, we don't have the back past data points to confirm that it could get there, but you know, these, these are those crypto moonshots that you're really looking at that are literal moonshots, like straight 100x gains, 50x gains. This is one of those potentials. If they follow through, again, we're seeing product come out, which is a good sign. We've bought into products or looked at ones and given thumbs up on products that have got a lot less going on. So I'd say it's a, it's a good sign. I'm pretty, I don't know if I'd say bullish on it, but it's definitely one on my watch list for now. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect when I got into Lovelace. When it was first introduced to me, I was like, what the hell are we talking about? What's Lovelace? The word, you know, it's an interesting name. I do like Lace Token. I like that number. And honestly, my, my biggest question is uh, when Lace, when $10? When $10 Lace? Like, d that's the biggest question I think we really need to ask each other. So, yeah. Keep an eye on this, definitely put it on your watch list. If you're not ready to get in yet because you need a little bit more confirmation or that, or you're waiting for a little bit of an alt altcoin run, maybe we're waiting for the next bull run, still should be on your watch list. It's something to keep an eye on just to see how the space continues on. That said, I do wanna make you, uh, not make you do anything, but I would request that if you do have any of the projects that are similar in the NFT ecosystem space, where they're trying to build projects that um, can be you know, uh, bigger for that, the, the, the underlying fundamentals of NFTs and help that, that part of it, then let me know below. I would like to check those out as well. Again, this was the only one I'd seen that had been going in this direction and it's really low market cap. So maybe there's a bigger project out there that's really looking to develop NFTs as a fundamental practice. So I would love to know that. Uh, you know what to do. This has been a long enough video already. It's about 45 minutes. Oh God, that said, if you found any value in this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. This is obviously helpful for the channel and I much appreciate it. And I guess I'm gonna leave you just because I love it so much. Lace, win $10. I'll see you guys in the next video.